Uh, I, this is going to be a brief video. Um, this is my little advertisement for the PSYOP model. Uh, you've seen the tape. Uh, I just want to say that I like the PSYOP model. Uh, it was originally designed as an assessment device, and then they kind of basically reversed it and um, saw that it actually was a great um, way to actually help people organize. The best parts of it are the lesson preparation, the building background, that's a, a major part of it. Um, I'm, let me talk about those two. The, the part I like about the lesson preparation is it methodically helps a teacher with ESL kids, ESL situations, to think about bringing the materials together, standards together, and to get an overview of how to plan the lessons. Um, hugely uh, beneficial there. The best part of that is the creation of the language objectives and the content objectives because it openly states it and helps you understand that you will have uh, the content for like a history class or something. You'll have your content objectives, but then you'll have language objectives, which basically mean reading, writing, speaking, and listening, and then more specifically what the assignment is. And it helps you understand, well, is that gonna be too tough for the kids or not? And you share these, both these content and, and uh, language objectives with the students. So the students are in on it. They know what they're gonna be studying that day. It's not just something they kind of have to figure out as they go along. So you very, obviously state what they, those objectives are. The kids actually are supposed to acknowledge what those objectives are and what they're gonna be doing. Um, I like SIOP because it helps you integrate in other uh, approaches with the planning. Do you want small groups? Uh, you definitely don't want lecture because lecture is not going to have any interaction with it. You just sit there and listen to it and you get grow less and less engaged. So um, the preparation is great. Um, the part I like about the second section on building background, that's where the culture maps come in. Those culture maps help you think about where's my student from and what's important to this student and what's their background and how can I bring their culture into this lesson. If you're teaching about American history, then of course, if you've got Hispanic students, Hispanics all over American history, from Florida to um, Louisiana Purchase was partially under Spanish control, especially New Orleans at one point, before the French had it and then had it again. Um, and then finally, um, Southwest and the Mexican American War and all of that. So this, I like it because uh, the PSYOP helps you as you prepare to see your students in building background and to see your content and how you want to uh, design the lessons. Um, they have the actual book called Making Content Comprehensible for English Learners, a PSYOP model by Jana Echeverria, Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen Voigt, and Deborah Short. Is You can get old copies, new copies of this. It's great. Um, you can find, uh, I've shown you the video, but you can see samples of those online. Uh, I like this because your textbook is not, is not, apparently you guys don't have access with the uh, videos from the text. But uh, those don't matter so much. Usually those videos are short and rather tiny, like three minutes. And I've got, I'm gonna be putting up some videos on differentiated instruction which isn't a PSYOP, but it can be incorporated into it. I like to give you a lot of examples of what the lesson looks like. Now, the PSYOP book, if you purchase it, and you can buy it used off Amazon, is it has, it actually has a little disc in it, so you can watch on your computer if you have a DVD player. You can watch on a DVD player. Um, okay, now other things about the PSYOP, and I'm making this a quick video, by the way. The clock won't even go off, it's about 10 till. Um, it gives you a lot of examples of lessons. It actually gives you lessons designed all through the book. Um, it methodically, as I said, it talks about different aspects. I talked about the 
it's got chapter on, uh, let's see, it talks about comprehensible input um, and it gives examples and you, you know, it's, I have a class in this, but I mean, you can, you can go over this and design and, and, and read through this. It gives you a lot of ideas how to, to uh, make changes in your lesson to make it uh, more accessible to your students and more engaging to your students and more methodical to you. Now, here's the thing you need to remember. And, and people will say, well, you're going to have these lessons in PSYOP. You're going to have to make a lesson every week or every month. If you get units and you know that you repetitively teach certain things every year, especially if you teach history or anything, really science, you, your curriculum is not going to disappear and totally morph every year is you can design units and plans, and then you just preserve those. You don't have to redo them the second year. You can make a few changes in them, you know, uh, but you don't have to redesign them. And they have examples here, mostly written down, although you can find these on the tape I showed you. It has a lot of scenarios. Um, you can actually read these and say, oh, that teacher could have done a better job on this. I think the lesson preparation is this huge, uh, the overall. There's a chapter on strategies, on chapter five in here, it talks about graphic organizers, directed reading, higher level thinking, a thing called Kala, which is a uh, teaching strategy, it's cognitive academic language learning approach. And it gives you some background on that. And what you can't find, you can find on either Wikipedia or you can just, you, you can find it lo located somewhere on the internet. Uh, talks about scaffolding. I like this paraphrasing. Think alouds. Um, not that you don't already do some of this, but it just reminds you this is a strategy. You can actually make one of those little. I always thought a little plastic sheet that just has a summary. That doesn't exist. I haven't made one of those yet. Probably couldn't commercially sell it since Syop would sue me. But but you can make these. Um, make these sheets that would give you some options to think about, and then you don't have to go le leafing through a book. You just put all your notes in one place and laminate it, and it's, it's kind of like the coach on a football team. He's got his plays, keeps flipping it over, looking at offense and defense. Or interaction is a major chapter in here. It talks about how to get more interaction with uh, kids. This applies to non-ESL situations. This is not particularly an ESL-only option although it works well, the ESL. Uh, usually things that work well, the ESL, work with students that are struggling in some way with either language or the content. So that's why I recommend, now SIOP goes on, it has uh, assessment, lesson delivery uh, sections. I, you saw those on the tape. Um, and even has a thing on special education in here, I mean, if you have situations with ELLs or, and so that's also a nice thing. Um, this has a lot of material that's very similar to your own textbook, the sheltered content instruction. And you'll notice that Jana Echeverria is also an author in this, so you're gonna find PSYOP leaking over into that. So that's really my little, uh, my little uh, infomercial for PSYOP, um, you know, uh, it's worth an investment. And it's one of those things I think it's very useful for a, for a school to take elements of this and make it your operating um, approach to teaching lessons. Thank you. And I kept this short.